Hey. Hello, good evening. How are you doing? Not too bad, not too bad. Welcome to the live. You look a little bit nervous. Don't don't worry. It's all good, yeah. <laughs> uh, I look a bit tired. It's been a long day. Bless, how, how, how are you? What have you been up to today? Just catching up on the housework because I was hung over over the weekend, uh, so I done nothing. Did you nothing ever, did over you, the weekend. Did you have a did you have a busy uh, a, a busy one? Uh, yeah, let's just yeah. <laughs> unexpected <laughs> unexpected party all right guys so let's just see how this had let me just tell you the format of how this is going to go yeah um this is what's going to happen so anyone that get, we are going to do battles so we'll just keep doing a battle all the way through um, and then if anyone gifts they're going to come and gift your side okay if anyone gifts my side during the time that we're live uh then i'll make sure you get that later um so that at least that way there's some sort of something towards anything we talk about so uh, i have got a bit of a plan i did send it to you anyway of what i was going to mm -hmm. talk about uh if there's anything you don't want to talk about then just you know don't go into that and just tell me that you don't want to talk about that and this I is just all all this is to do guys is just to find out if sarah can help any of you in any way whatsoever just helping one person uh, change something in their life uh, then you know or make a a, a different choice uh, then that's what this is all about so you know i've got five interviews booked this week i made a bit of a boo for friday uh, so i'm doing two on thursday instead of uh, <laughs> one on friday because i'm i'm traveling on friday and um, but um, yeah so guys anyone wants to ask any questions put them in the chat down below uh, i will be trying to drive the way of the conversation but unfortunately it's going to be what's, whatever sarah wants to talk about is the way that we're going to go so uh, we'll, we'll get started we'll put a match on straight away let's just see if we can't do something while we're here and we'll see where we mm -hmm. go uh, and guys don't forget uh, please don't gift me during this interview go over that are you that side or that side? I think you're that side there, aren't you? It depends, uh, depends whose screen we're on. <laughs> I think on my screen you're over there, but I, I'm not sure how it works on the other <laughs> way around. So uh, just uh, make sure that you go and have a look on uh, and, and and make sure that everything okay, goes okay, to okay. Mummy and Cody. So so well, let's get Thank started. I mean, I, whatever whatever you get, I, I hope you do okay. Uh, but obviously it's about you know um, about yourself and about your past. And we had a little chat a little while ago, um, right. and then obviously that's where we had the 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 the, the inkling to have a longer deeper conversation so sure. tell us a little bit about your i know i think you've written one book is that right already you've written a book already no i've got four in that series oh, look at that she's got i got that wrong she got four books <laughs> um it started it started off as as one book um and i think the book done so well and people wanted to to know more they wanted to know what happened afterwards wow. um so yeah, give, us a bit, give us a bit of background then, a bit of history. Obviously, the books were, were came around because of something that happened in your past. So tell us a little bit about about that, if you don't mind. So originally, um, I was 30 when I decided I was going to write my book. Um, I used to make jokes when I was younger that, God, if I ever wrote a book, like it would be a bestseller. That yeah. was a joke I used to make when I was 16. Um, so I decided um, my husband had passed away. Mm-hmm when I was 30 years old and uh, it was quite a hard thing to go through um, but that kind of made me realise that it wasn't the worst thing I'd been through that you know it was kind of made it a little bit easier to deal with because I'd already been through so much in my life yeah. so I started writing my book about my childhood um, and it took me a couple of years before I actually published it for, for different oh, yeah. reasons wow. um, when I did eventually publish it I kind of just published it and ignored it if you have a look on reviews on Amazon, unfortunately, probably tell you there's loads of spelling mistakes and grammatical errors. I didn't even get an editor. I literally wow. just panicked and pushed that publish button once I found out I could do it on Amazon. Absolutely. It's easy enough to do, isn't it, nowadays? And then I kind of just ignored it for a little while. Um, um, I created a Facebook page. Um, yeah. So I started talking about it on there. And one of my followers messaged me um, about eight weeks later and says, do you know your book's the number one bestseller? I don't know. <laughs> wow. She's like, yeah, have a look. So I had a look. I had a look on Amazon.com at, at first, um, and I thought that she was, uh, you know, lying. Yeah. Um, but then she she caught back to me. She was like, no, I meant Amazon.com. She's like, have a look on Amazon.com. The dysfunctional oh, the, the, the family. Full ver the full version, not the UK version. Wow. Yeah. yeah have a look on Amazon.com in the dysfunctional families category. Your book's number one. It's been there for a couple of weeks. I, I didn't know you didn't know. Wow. Sort of thing. So I had a look, and it was. 
um, and I was shocked. I was even more shocked when I seen book two um, was the Princess Diana story, the 25 year anniversary wow. book. Wow. And book three was a book by Kathy Glass, who is an author I aspired to be like. Wow. So, so you yeah, beat her. Then, you beat her. Then I kind of had, it was weird, then I kind of had this almost like, I felt like imposter syndrome. Oh, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, it, 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 it's me, it's my life and everything else, but I kind of felt like, you know, so, yeah. so it was a little bit. A little it, it was bit, like it was about somebody else. Yeah, so that's how I dealt with my past. I was yeah. able to kind of detach myself from it. Uh, when I started writing the book, uh, when I first started writing, I didn't remember everything. But as soon as I started writing it, it was almost like I was watching a movie in my head. Wow. It was okay. crazy how much it opened up. Uh, and, you know, uh, people in my life have read the book and, and, and have agreed a lot of the things in there, you know, definitely did happen yeah. and stuff like that, you know. Um, but yeah, so. When I wrote that first book, everyone wanted to know what happened when you were 17, when you finally moved out of your mom and dad's house. Yeah. And I don't think they expected because I had quite an abusive childhood. And so unfortunately... The, the, the first book went to you 17, is that what you said? Yeah. Yeah, yeah okay, yeah. From the age of four to 17. Wow. Um, so, and then, then it, the, the, it ended me moving out of my parents' house. And, you know, finally, you know, my second book is called A Mile in My Own Shoes. So it's yeah. finally there. thinking you're an adult at the age of 17. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine? Absolutely, yeah. You're not an adult at 17, really, are you, to be fair? No, not at all. But I thought I was. Um, wow. Got into, got into older relationships, got into relationships um, that weren't very healthy. Yeah. Thinking that it was kind of normal. Like, when you've been subjected to that your childhood, it, it, it becomes almost very, very normal. Yeah. Um, and then, before I knew it, I had kids young. I, I was married with three kids at the age of 24. Wow, sir. And then I just kind of like went through the emotions of life, you know, living on autopilot. So were these then, all, were these kids with uh, with the same father or? No, so when I, was, when I was 17, I moved in with a man who has kind of been my friend for a couple of years. Um, and before I knew it, at the age of 19, I, I was having a baby. And then wow. me and him split up and then got back together because I found out I was pregnant with our second child. Yeah. And then after the second child was born, we realized that we were literally just friends. Yeah. You know, there, were, there was nothing really there apart from this friendship mm -hmm. uh, and annoying each other. <laughs> you know, when you get to that point. <laughs> Isn't that what couples do anyway? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> was it, can I ask, were, were the, was, were they, was he abusive in any way or was he? Uh... Not my first relationship. He was just okay. very lazy. Right. Um, okay. The second relationship I got into was somebody who I thought was really cool. He played the guitar. He yeah. loved Oasis, which was something that I loved. Um, and he just seemed really, really cool. He'd just taken his na his grandparents on holiday. So he seemed like the most loveliest person ever. Yeah. Um, wow. But a couple of months into our relationship, after he'd already moved in with me, the wow. violence started. Wow, wow, wow. And that, how old were you then? Uh, so I would have been 20, 20, 21. Wow, wow, wow. But I kind of thought, I, I hadn't processed my childhood at all. Mm. And I kind of had this almost this feeling like I deserved it. You know what oh, I mean? It was kind of wow, like so. Yeah, absolutely. Kind of allowed it to happen. I see. I seen my dad treat my mom the same way as well growing you up. You thought so that was of... no. You thought that was normal. Yeah. Wow. Wow. And how how long were you how long were you with him for? Um. So I was. I tried to leave him for a year. <laughs> so I was working okay. two years all together. But it took a whole yeah. year of trying to leave him. Um, he wasn't the type of person that, that would leave just, just easily. Wow. Um, caused lots, lots and lots of issues. Um, plenty of times, I wouldn't ring the police on him, but other people would have. Yeah. Um, and they don't do anything. Well, they didn't back then anyway. Well, they don't now, to be fair. I think it's, well, they may be a little bit better now, I suppose, but. Uh, I, would, but yeah. I would say that's a bit better now. But yeah, back then, back then, they, they literally done nothing. Just take, um, you back, take you back there, wouldn't they, really, to be fair? Well, yeah. this is it. They, they would take him away, have a little conversation with him, and then drop him off back with me. Oh, dear me. Wow. Is that, <laughs> is it, was it your place? It was it your place? Yeah, so he, he ended up making me give up my house because it was the house that I'd shared with my kid's dad. Wow. Before, before oh, I see. Him. So, so he, he's, he had his own insecurities as well, obviously. Yeah, definitely. Um, his excuse he gave me was because he didn't have a dad growing up. That's why he treated me and my kids so badly. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, not 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 an excuse really, is it? To be fair. Yeah. Yeah, I don't. I don't listen to any excuse. The excuses my dad, well, I had for my dad abusing me as a kid was, uh, he was paranoid schizophrenic. That was well. That was your excuse. That that was the excuse that I got given. Oh, I see. Up. Okay, yeah. Oh, so he didn't know what he was doing. So it was somebody else. But he did. Hey, angel. He became a paranoid schizophrenic because of what he did. Oh well, then that that makes sense, doesn't it? Really, <laughs> to be fair. So, so yeah. <laughs> So do you still speak to? Sorry, okay. So just go just back to your, your beginning. Is your parents still alive, or are they not with us anymore? Yeah. So my, I'll have to talk a little bit about my books and stuff first to explain about. That's what, okay. That's that. okay. That's fine. Yeah, you do it in your order. It's fine. It's okay. If I ask so, a question, just bring it in. I, I moved. I moved back to my second hometown after I published my book. Um, kind of like dis distanced myself completely, cut all contact with all my toxic family. Yeah, um, and decided yeah. to start, start a new life. Um, unfortunately, my dad's side of the family kind of could see that I was doing well, could see that my book was doing well. Yeah, yeah. And um, um, wow, they they caused they really did cause some issues. Wow. Um, in the end, I had the police turn up at my house and tell me I had to take my book off off Amazon. Tried to get me done for slander. Apparently, my 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 auntie wow. did. Wow, because um, because obviously book was a lie. Obviously, that's what they're saying. Well, but basically, and she would argue, she argued with everyone on my uh, Facebook account. Really? Um, wow. The police officer, the police, I, I kind of, I had this gut feeling that something was going to come of it because she was yeah. like proper attacking everyone. So I printed out the whole conversation before I deleted the post. And I had 200 A4 pages. Really? 200. Wow. Like, I'm not joking. Wow, this went on and on and on and on. I didn't want to delete the post because it was giving me even more ammunition. Yeah, and I'm so glad that I did because when that police officer came around, he had one little piece of paper from, from that whole stream. And uh, I basically sat him down and I said to him, here, read that first. Read, look look for all these pieces of paper and then we'll have a conversation. Yeah. So I did. The police officer was crying by the end of it. Oh, bless. So he told me a personal story about himself and stuff like yeah. that and opened up a little bit. And then he literally begged me, please, please, just do something about it, you know. They are not going to stop until you do something about it, so you need yeah, to press charges. Yeah. So then I got in touch with, well, I went, I started, first I started a, uh, I'd never had counselling, never spoke to anyone really? in my life. Um, but there was a local charity called Nexus NI. And they give free counselling to survivors of child abuse. Um, so wow. I went and spoke to them, and that gave me so much confidence, made me realise how, how everything I've been through, and made me realise just how strong I was. So I decided to press charges on, on my dad, which was kind of like a really, it's hard. See, see when you've been conditioned to love someone, because that's what you're meant to do. Yeah, in that way, obviously, yeah, that's, yeah. It, it, I get it's it. hard to hate them. So I had to just keep reminding myself that, that you know, what had happened was wrong, you know, throughout it all. Um, but a couple of weeks before the court case, my dad hung himself. Wow. Now, he had threatened me since I was six years old that if I ever told anyone about what had happened, he, that exactly what he would do. And he did. Hmm. So... I kind of didn't push my books for a couple of years. I kind of went quiet for a little while, and uh, yeah. How, how did you? How did you? Sorry, just anyone that's liking my live or following me, thank you, Poppy. Thank you for the follow. Thank, thank you for the you likes. Guys. If anyone wants a gift, uh, please gift over that side uh, because uh, everything's going to whatever charity uh, Sarah's talking about tonight. Let me ask you a question about your dad. Obviously, I understand your dad passed away. It's a, regardless of what happened. You know, I understand how you would have been made to feel because you'd still have feelings for your father, um, whether that was one way or the other. Um, but how did you feel when when that happened? Were you were you upset or were you? Um, were yeah. You, so were you? Were you it, was, was it a relief? Um. So the, to start off with, it was I hated him because I knew that was the last form of manipulation he could have done. He didn't Absolutely. only hang himself. He has seven other children, uh, and he wrote his whole suicide letter was all about me. I'll it never know what that says. It was because it was because he was obviously saying it's because of you. Obviously, I'm guessing. Yeah. So, so yeah. then, obviously, any any bridges I might have built with my family had they gone to court, had he had they been convicted, had they maybe actually finally believed me, 
well, that was all out the window. There was no way that's ever going to happen because as far as they're concerned, I may as well have put that belt around his neck. Even though I did 300 miles away and I yeah, hadn't absolutely. spoke to him for five years, six years wow. even. Um, so, yeah, it caused, it caused a lot a lot of issues. I had to um, move house because I got a lot of threats. And what age Once, were you then, uh, Sarah? Sorry. 38. It's only a couple of years right. ago. Oh, wow. OK, OK. It wasn't, it wasn't a long while ago then, bless you. No, 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 no. no. Wow, OK. Two, two, uh, two years ago, it would be. Okay. Sorry, so, yeah. you, you, you moved house. Yeah, I had to because it caused um, a lot of, a, a lot of my dad's family were angry. Do you know what I mean? Right, okay, yeah, and, absolutely. Uh, they're the same ones that had the pitchforks that made me press charges in the first place were the ones that were now blaming me for oh, pressing okay. charges. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Okay, so you, you were damned if you do, damned if you didn't really, to be fair. Mm -hmm. Then I also wow. got told that because it was literally two weeks before the court case but not everything had been sent over to the cps so my police officer informed me that that had they got everything to the cps in time the court the, the case would have carried on in his absence yeah um, oh, but, I because, see. Okay. but because it hadn't they, they had to just close the case it couldn't go ahead wow. but at that point did you want it to go ahead at that point or did you not want it to no go ahead? no i'll be honest i kind of seen it as that was that was my closure that was that was that was a bit of finality wasn't it really to be fair and and i know i don't know it's it's isn't it called munchausen by proxy syndrome you know isn't that what it's called where you mm -hmm. you you love the person that, that's doing the abuse and and it, you just that's the way you know it so that's what uh, you're in as an adult because obviously you had to pretend that never, nothing ever happened and it always got swept under the carpet so yeah, as absolutely. an adult and being the eldest child i almost became oh. like my dad's mate you know, yeah, he used to sit okay. there opposite the table and, you know, get him his, his, his Sunday newspaper and, you know, all yeah, that type okay, of stuff. Yeah, I, I, because I was the eldest, I became a sounding board for him. What made me write my book as well was the day my husband had died, my dad tried to hug me, uh, you know, as you would, you know, yeah, your yeah, husband's yeah. just, just uh, and my, my, uh, my blood just rang cold. So First time he hugged yeah. me. Yeah, and I just, right, I couldn't, okay. I couldn't pretend anymore. Wow. And then I was angry because my husband had died and I had a son, you know, without a dad. And that man was still alive and, wow. you know. <laughs> wow, okay. And and that, that was that was only two years ago? No, so when my, hus my husband died 10 years ago. 10, 10 years, years ago, okay, yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, All right, so 10 so yeah. years ago. So you've still been dealing with that for 10 years until your father decided to um, do what he did. Um mm -hmm you know re which is fairly recent to be fair so how what, what sort of coping mechanisms have you have you put in place to help you because obviously what you don't want to do is is make sure you want to break a cycle at the end of the day so you want mm -hmm. to make sure that none of that goes to your children and make sure your yeah, children okay. get the life that maybe the you first didn't way get I, first way i broke the cycle was <clears throat> distancing myself from anybody like that was yeah. part of that um and completely starting again um I think writing my book was the biggest healing thing that I could have ever done because I'd never been able to speak about it. But one thing that I'll say to people whenever they, they need to get something off their chest, the best thing about writing it is you haven't got anybody questioning you, you haven't got anybody disturbing you. You literally are you and your words and you get a chance to get what you need to get out. And that's what my book was about. I didn't know I was ever going to actually publish it. I kind of wrote yeah. it just to kind of cope. Um, and then, how easy how easy was it to put because obviously a lot of people i mean there's people say that, that, that there's always people have got a book a book in them a book and leave a, a book in them yeah uh, and i think i've got one as well but i do again it's about the time one the time to do it and two you know how easy is it to do i mean i think you can publish a book within a week now you know i think it, and once yeah, you've no, got it the takes me, type, takes me yeah. about six months to do a book oh, six months okay <laughs> not, not a week not a week then no, no definitely week. not <laughs> No, definitely not. And I don't understand how these people do. Well, they do. They have dictation, it's called, on their computer and they just talk. Oh, yeah. oh I you see. Yeah. So, so, not, so type, they can, not typing, yeah. No, they, they can get that out really, really fast. Um, I looked into that, but uh, dictation doesn't like my accent. Oh, bless. What are you actually? Yeah. You haven't <laughs> so got that much of an accent now, words. to be fair. But... <laughs> um, but yeah, I didn't like my accent. And when you have to repeat the same thing over and over, also, I couldn't have spoken my book out because I've got kids in the house. Oh, and yeah, my, of course, When yeah. they're adults, they can read my book, you know what I mean? But as, yeah. as children, yeah, I absolutely. shelter them from all that. Um, wow. But you asked, you asked how I, I coped, kind of. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. 
I think from a very young age, I became very spiritual. So I lived I very I much. I saw that when we spoke, moment. didn't I? Yeah. Yeah, I lived very much in the moment. Now I realised as a child, it was just getting through that day. Now, now, now I I live for the day. If that makes sense. Now that I'm an adult. Yeah. But each, but as each a child, is a new day. Just, yeah, if I could just get through today, you know, and that's kind of what it was like. Is that, that's so, not what I you are. That isn't how you are now, though, is it? No, no. Yeah, you're definitely a no. different person now. You seem a lot more together. Uh, and I mean, I, I didn't know you before anyway, you know, but uh, you definitely seem that you know you've got your shit together, basically. <laughs> you know yeah. what you know what you know. I what you feel want. sorry for people that did know me before. I was your typical oh, person that never been able to talk to anyone that would get drunk at the pub. And this poor stranger that's never even met me would know my whole life story in five minutes. Wow, it used to right, it was yeah. called, it's called trauma dumping. Yeah. Um, and see, imagine how awkward that other person would have felt. Yeah, well, I didn't absolutely. have I didn't have that kind of empathy whenever I was younger. It was just I needed it out of me. Just Do you know what I mean? Now. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Now I have empathy. I will only talk about my books if I'm asked about it. And if people ask me about my life, it's like you can go and buy it. You can I'm read going, it. Yeah. I don't need to talk about it. And where can they get? Where can they get? Away. Where can they get your books? I'm guessing they're all available on Amazon. They're all available on Amazon. They are free with Kindle Unlimited. Oh, if you have okay. an audible subscription you can get the book my life in his hands the first book on audible and are you are you are you are you, are you are you are you um speaking it or is it somebody else speaking it no so i didn't feel back then that i would be a good person to read the book since getting oh, other people okay. to do it i wish i had yeah, because nobody because it, will tell the story the same way as I will. It's a bit more emotion involved as well, isn't it? If you're if you're the actual person, uh, then but, surely when you're recounting a particular event, uh, then the emotion comes out as well, doesn't it? Really, to be definitely. fair, so that's obviously better. Um, well, I've been introduced to start TikTok series, so I'm thinking oh, really? about starting my TikTok series. Um, and each series being the book with with each chapter, chapter. being how many chapters yeah, chap in the book? How many chapters in the book? uh between 30 and 40 on average yeah, in because each i think book. i think series is uh is 10 minute 10 18. minute segments and you've only 20, got so, oh, 20, 20 minutes now segments. oh they've changed it okay yeah. and 80 up to 80 videos oh, so if wow, i can get one so... book, 80 videos even if i have to do part one part two yeah but then you can just you can do that as a series and it's, it's like a it's like been buying the book but you but you read it you actually read it yourself. yeah oh my god how when you're writing that down, that that information about your past, does it bring back those memories and those feelings? I mean, obviously not the feelings at the time, but does yeah. it bring emotion as in um, as in anger? No, definitely not anger, because um, it sounds really weird, but I accept that those things had to happen to me as a child for me to be who I am today. And I accept that wholeheartedly. It was wrong and it should never have happened and it should never happen to anyone. But the same, I, I've known people that exactly the same thing has happened to them by the same sort of like family member and stuff like that, even yeah. similar amount of time because it happened to me for 10 years. Um, and it has completely destroyed their life. They have been in yeah. therapy their whole life. They'll never trust wow. anyone. Yeah. Um, I'm too trusting because not everybody is is dark like my past you know what i mean so i will see yeah. the good of everyone um it's done the opposite to me it made me not want to ever get down that, about it and stuff like cody? that yeah is that cody I'm a little scream bless and um, <laughs> god you want to check yeah it's just because he's not tall enough to reach things ah bless let me ask you a question let me ask you one question if, if you could give somebody that is maybe going through, maybe isn't our age, maybe is, you know, a bit younger, younger. and is maybe going, because obviously this app is all about the younger generation. Not, not we're, we're not, we're the exception really, to be fair. Um, what advice would you give somebody that maybe is going through that experience now as to how they can break that cycle and maybe not be in it uh, at the moment without going the through it? Thing, the hardest thing is getting away from that because while they are still in your life, you're going to be dragged back into it time and time again yeah you can't you can't break the cycle if the people that are causing the hurt are still in the, the picture and for that is the hardest thing for anyone to do to break away from that the situations where you can't break away from that and then in that instance i think it's all about working on yourself 
mm. control trying to take control of your own emotions because see all that anger and everything that you feel you wouldn't naturally feel that if it wasn't for that other person so why give them that power to let yeah. you feel angry does that, that make sense, sense? Yeah, so you've turned it into a spiritual thing and, and, and sort yeah. of learned to accept. I mean, you can't, ch I, I do say to a lot of people, you can't mm -hmm. change a past. You can only you can only shape the future. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and, and you are right. You are in charge of your own emotions. Uh, yeah. You know, somebody can make you feel that way, but you're accepting the feeling, if that makes sense. Yeah. So as yeah. long as you're doing that, then that's fine. Look, I think you are an amazing person. I think what you've done you. uh, is I'm putting it down in pen to paper, so to speak. I'm putting it down. I think that is a, a form of therapy in itself you know, to, to make sure that – and it makes it – surely it makes it – I know you may, may not want it to be real, but it makes it – like it's there forever that it actually happened and it and you know you're as you say when you were writing it other things you were remembering that you were hadn't really thought about before but all of a sudden you were thinking oh my god i remember that bit and I rem and, and that bit as well you know and oh my god i remember that as well that, you know that, and that would make sense why that happened because absolutely you know I mean? and, and, and it was almost like a jigsaw puzzle and maybe i behaved this way at that moment because of this you know and it's mm -hmm. it's just giving you a little bit more foresight and a little bit more in your eyes spirituality to know actually you know what as long as i've now put all those demons to bed they'll always be part of my life but it, it does make i agree it makes you who you are you know unfortunately your past shapes your future you know and it, it, if you've had a tough past then it's how you how you deal with it i did see something else on there that i want to just touch on if i can sarah and i might be wrong but you tell me if i'm wrong have you lost a friend recently um, was... No, so that was another reason why I wanted to write my book. Um, so back in 2013, when my husband had died, he was quite an insecure man. So I wasn't mm -hmm. allowed social media or anything like that. Yeah. But after he died, his, his kids asked me to do a Facebook page. Right. Um, and so when I was a child and I was living in Ireland and I was going through all that abuse, I opened up to my best friend. And one of the reasons why I thought it was normal was because she was going through the same. Wow. So okay. me and her become very close because we were able to talk about what was happening at home. And you too thought scared. it was normal. You thought it was normal. Yeah, too scared yeah. to the right. So she was one of the first people when I first joined Facebook to make this tribute page for my husband. Wow. And um, she was the first person that I looked for. Now I knew she'd got married and I knew she'd had kids, but when I left Ireland, I was fifteen. We didn't have mobile phones. We didn't have yeah, any of that. Like literally. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it was like I hadn't spoke to him fifteen years. So you know. And I remember searching and I couldn't, I couldn't find her. And then another friend of mine who was my friend back then from Ireland also basically messaged me and apologized to me and said that two weeks previous, my friend who everyone thought was happy and got on with her life just obviously couldn't deal with it. Um, her husband went out to the shop to get a pint of milk. She was in the bath, her two boys were downstairs and her boy had gone upstairs to see if his mommy was okay and she she'd sliced her wrist and that made me feel guilty mm -hmm. because i remember thinking like maybe if i just joined facebook two weeks earlier maybe if i was able to have reached out to her just knowing that somebody else that had been through similar was yeah. there and ready to talk to her could have just been enough and that's why i wanted to write my book because i wasn't going to have that do you know what i mean if i just told and my that's... story beforehand maybe i could have helped wow. someone else and that um, look, I think I also think that you know you can't blame yourself for obviously what, no, what happened to your that, friend. I think I, I think it, it, in your head you're thinking, oh, well, if only, if only, if only. But mm -hmm. I think what you need to look at, and I think you do anyway. I think you're quite positive. Is if your book or this mm -hmm. live or this conversation helps one person just yeah. one person it might not be your best friend it could be anybody it, it and it and it just sort of makes it a little bit worthwhile um that's, that's exactly what... what i say in the first book if this oh, book is it really just one person then my whole life hasn't been do you know what i mean my life I has had a purpose if i tell it, my kids that, i tell my kids that all the time i said you don't have to impress the whole world just want just have an impact on <laughs> one person's life go on so with this book if this book could just help just one person, then I feel like my traumatic childhood might have had a purpose instead of feeling like one big massive punishment. I will say that I have no regrets. What happened in my life has happened and can never be undone. Everything happens for a reason, and I truly believe that. So on my first book, I wrote that. And I honestly, and I believe that 100%. 
I have everything happens for a reason written in my on my arm. But we are like we are like we are like separate souls that should have should have met years ago because <laughs> I I literally that is that is my philosophy. Guys, thank you for oh, Ali. Thank you for that. I appreciate it for the gift. Uh, anything? Don't forget, guys. Anyone that gifts me on in these battles uh, will be going to Sarah, and Sarah will be given to whatever charity she chooses. So yeah, okay. So it's what? Sorry, Nexus Ni. Oh, there we go. Okay, so she knows what the charity is, which is great. So anyone, any, any, like anything that's coming this this evening, we'll go. I'll send that to Sarah. Tell her what it is after night. the live. Uh, so let's move on to some nicer stuff, okay? Because yes. we've done all the dark stuff. Uh, I've got about an hour, so we, about not another half hour. As long as you're okay with that, uh, then tell me. I think only, okay with that, then if yeah. it's all right, yeah, <laughs> if it's fine. Well, we're going to talk about it now anyway. So uh, obviously, you said you've got four of the kids. Did you say? So I've got three, four kids all together. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. So uh, three, three of the kids, you got four in total. So how old are you the kids? Uh, almost 21, almost 16, 19, 19 and almost 16. Sorry. She doesn't look old enough to have kids that age. Does she really? To be fair, <laughs> I am <but>, 40. So. <laughs> <laughs> Bless. Uh, Angel Outcast is saying that Sarah's books helped me with a similar past. Uh, she said that she's read all of your books and she's sending her love. Um, mm. But look, so when Cody came along, obviously, were you you weren't expecting Cody, or were you were you so, trying? No, for that? so I, I'll be honest, right? I I always said that one of the when, when I when I realised I was a young mom, I had seen the positive in that. I see the positive in everything, right? Yeah, absolutely. So I, yeah. being a young mom and having three kids, and then my husband dying at the age of thirty, that kind of made me realise that do you know what? I've had my kids young, but by the time my son is sixteen, by the time I hit forty, my youngest is going to be sixteen. I can wow. I can start traveling the world then. That Absolutely, was my plan. Absolutely, yeah. Hundred percent my plan. And I was sticking to it. I always said that if I ever got pregnant, there's no way I would have a baby. You know, because yeah, yeah. my my mom she still was having kids after I stopped having kids. You know, she the woman was forty six or something when she stopped popping kids really? out. So I remember saying, <laughs> I remember saying, I'm not going to be like my mom and doing the school run in my fifties. I'm not doing it, right? <laughs> and I was having one. Um, and then. I'd been single, so like you said about breaking a cycle. Well, one of the things that I realised was every relationship I've been through, they all turned out to be quite abusive in the end, one way or another, whether it was controlling or something. Yeah. And I had to then look at myself then. What is it? There's something that is 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 happening. That You're questioning that... yourself. You're questioning yeah, yourself. And I'm glad I did. I'm glad I did because I realised that at the very start of the relationship, I was trying to be the perfect person and I was letting things slide which yeah. maybe you shouldn't let slide. Absolutely. I was building a rod from my own back. Um, and then obviously whenever I wasn't liking it anymore because they weren't treating me with the respect and everything that yeah. I deserved, and put my foot down, that's when things would start getting, you know, toxic okay. and all the rest just, of it. Just one, just one sec, just one sec, so just one sec. Guys, so Span, just to let you know, uh, I think you've written four books, Sarah, so far. I've written a few more, but they're my main books, yeah. Yeah, four main books, and she's got a few more in the pipeline by the sounds of it as well. Uh, that's for you, Ali. So four books plus more. Uh, you can get them all on on Amazon. I'm sure if you go and follow oh, Sarah, great. you'll get them. Jump over onto um, get have a check out my TikTok shop. I sell signed copies of the book there on there go, as well. You, you know what? You know all about that content. A little bit. Uh, a little bit more personal if you get if you order one from me uh, there we go and it'll be signed as well i bet you yeah. uh okay so span the other one for you is uh, we're doing an interview with with sarah from mummy and cody about her life so it's been going on about half an hour now but another 25 minutes left uh we will be just getting to the heart of the nice stuff but we've done a, we've done some deep stuff in this half hour to be fair <laughs> uh, and i haven't cried yet so i nearly i, I nearly was you told me about your friend i wasn't far off it there mm -hmm. um but you know it's uh it, it's been really amazing so far so i really do appreciate you taking the time out to 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 you know tell us what you what, what what's happened and and i will just to let you know i will be anyone wants a gift gift over that side uh because uh, all the gifts Thank are going to sarah tonight and i will be uploading it if you miss it i will be uh putting this uh, video up on youtube uh when i get time i'm on holiday for a week next week uh Angel now, I, cast... that, I might have put some makeup on oh, don't worry it's all good you'll be all good if you don't want... i'm all right you don't want me to do it's all good uh, no, you can, honestly, uh, you. Uh, and then uh, uh sorry angel outcast tells me that she's engaged to your eldest son is that correct Yes. Yeah, she just told so, me. She told so, me. So, so Angel Icas uh, read my books before she met my son. Oh, well, she wow. read my first book anyway before yeah. she met my son. And then when she found out that that my that that you know oh that's my mom by the way. 
that kind of like well, she didn't she didn't even know at that point no so she just she had read this book you can ask her but basically she she had read my book and then found out that the boy that she liked it was her mom it was his mom no way how how random is that and how mm -hmm. and how is the world working that that connects because I obviously also, I, worked, I worked in a factory um, about five years ago and uh, on the way to work somebody was sat on the bus reading my book what while that you were sat really, there that, that was no really way. <laughs> did you just go up and get a pen and just sign it for them no, well, I did. I, I, so first of all, I wasn't going to say anything. So, but yeah. I seen this person a couple of times on the bus because it was the same work bus that we had. Oh to get. yeah, okay, yeah. Um, so the first time I didn't say anything, and then I kind of kicked myself because why didn't I say something? Yeah. And I was like, what does this they think? Like, so I was with a guy at the time who was telling me that I was narcissistic because I was writing about yeah. myself. So then yeah. I didn't want to go and like you know say to oh by the way do you know that's my book? Yeah. <laughs> I just I didn't feel. <laughs> So, so it was a couple of it was a couple of days later, and I just purposely sat at the front of the bus, noticing that they sat at the front. Yeah, yeah. Um, I was like, and I was just, I was really cheeky. I was like, sorry, do you mind if I ask what book you're reading? And, and then <laughs> like, she goes with me. Thank you, yeehaw. And I was like, do you know, do you know who Sarah Osmond is? And she was like, um, no. I was like, me? She and then she told me I was lying. I was like, no, honestly, it's. I was like, should I tell you what? I can tell you exactly what's in the book. I was like, you know. Wow. Didn't tell um, the end, did you? Just be kind. No, of course not. <laughs> I, I keep, so I get told my, my, my readers love and hate me at the same time because a lot of my readers will pick up the book and not be able to put it down all day. They literally yeah. read it in one sitting because I, I leave all my chapters on a, on a cliffhanger. My life oh, is a cliffhanger. So, you, you, know. Wanna, you know, your your life is a, is a movie. That's what, I, that's what I'm thinking. I think... I think that's where you go. But let's let's get back to Cody because um, obviously we'll come back to the movie bit in a minute because I've got a little question about that. Uh, so obviously when Cody came along and then you've obviously got your next so before, stage of just, your life. I was going to say just before Cody came along. So when, when I first met his dad, when I first joined TikTok, I had I, I I seen this bloke on TikTok and he was quite spiritual. Hang on, Sarah. Know. Hang on, Sarah. Just one sec. Sorry, guys. Can somebody go over to Sarah's side and gift her? Because I don't want her to lose a six win streak oh, from me. You. So if you can do that, that would be great. Anybody can do that. Just make sure she goes and please nobody gift me any more in this live. If I'd gift any, if you give me anything, it's going to Sarah anyway. So just go and give her the gifts anyway, and let's make sure she wins. Thank uh, you. Sorry. Thank okay. You. Go on. Sorry. Go on. Yeah. So I, I have been single for a couple of years because obviously I wanted to break this this cycle. Um, but anyway, I remember I remember back in 2000, when, when TikTok first started. So not long yeah. after, three months after TikTok had first started. And I remember like sitting there with my friends, sing, single women, and I was flicking through, through TikTok and we're kind of like, you know, trying to look at what was our type. But I remember seeing this bloke and, and I was like, yeah, no, he's cute, but I think he's got a girlfriend. So it kind of just ignored him. Yeah. Um, but he, he was one of my followers and he, he seemed quite fun. He'd done these stupid little, like, these little dances on TikTok and he was spiritual. Um, anyway, I like, just never even thought about it. Um, it was about a year later and I noticed this person started coming into my life. Um, yeah. And then started like flirting a little bit and stuff like that. Um, and before I knew it... <laughs> So I, I told the I, I manifest this this ideal person. I told the universe like exactly what I wanted this person to be like and yeah. everything else. Basically, I wanted to fall in love with a male version of myself, but I didn't realise that was what I was asking for. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so so I met I met I met this. Uh, well, first of all, we we started chatting off the app, and yeah. we were video calling some days twelve hours, some days even sixteen hours, literally on video call all day, every yeah. day. Wow, like the bloke literally knew everything about me within a couple of weeks and seen how I lived and everything else, right? So by the time we actually met in person, because I lived in Northern Ireland, he lived in Devon. Wow, okay, that's a bit of a change, um, a, bit of a, a bit of a distance. We, we would be on live and he'd be like in my little guest box and everything and all my followers were trying to talk me into giving him a chance. All his followers were saying it would be cute if he was with me. And it, it kind of like became this like big thing. So eventually we decided we were going to meet. Um, and we did. Um, I went to, over on holiday. Um, I spent 19 days in Devon and then he came back over to Ireland with me. And it was only meant wow. to be for, for a couple of weeks. But during that time, like I remember saying to him, so I got told just before I, uh, I met him that I was probably going through early menopause because I'd had different things, as my, you know, all yeah, down there. Absolutely. Yeah, 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 I get that. Um, and, I don't and, get it, obviously, but, but you know, I understand what you mean. <laughs> 
that's why I've, I've been told that. Um, and he didn't believe 40 was shooting blanks at the age of, you know, 40 odd. But I remember, like, we still tried to be careful. New relationship <laughs> and everything. We still tried to be careful. But I remember saying to him, like, you know, I am literally very fertile. And we both followed this tarot reader on YouTube. Um, yeah. And it was like both of our readings always seemed to be the same. We may, we may as well have just watch, you know, the same. He was Sagittarius, I was a Gemini, but they always say, and it, both of our star signs kept saying, if you're trying to get, if you're not trying to get pregnant, be careful. Oh, okay. And then a couple of weeks after you came over here, I started throwing up in the morning. And if you've ever been pregnant, you know that what that sick is like. It's like an acid yellow. Oh, wow. Only happens when you're pregnant. Really? So I remember saying to him, I, I think I am. <laughs> we'd only been together like we'd been talking for for months but we'd only actually literally been together about six weeks and i found out i was pregnant oh wow so, now because we thought we were so madly in love you know yeah. the universe had brought us together he was literally like the male version of me you know we never what you were looking, what you were looking for yeah, exactly. Everything that I was looking for. And he didn't get jealous over TikTok because he was really big on TikTok himself. Yeah, when okay. I, met him, I had 10,000 followers. He had 100,000 followers. Oh, you to I think yeah. you told me about this, but I, I did write his name down and I forgot what you said. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll, we'll mention it. <laughs> you don't, well, it's but, up to you if you want to, you know, but uh, yeah. It's, uh... Well, it, it does. It do I'll tell you, it doesn't bother me because of, of what's happened since. So I'll carry yeah, on with okay. the story. Yeah, that's okay. We did. As fully grown grown-ups you know we both wanted to go and travel the world and everything we yeah. had those conversations about what what but when it actually really came down to it i couldn't physically do that as soon as i knew i was pregnant that, that baby was mine then do you know what i mean yeah absolutely um, yeah. and things did go through my head do you know what I, I had a husband that died on me so i know how easy it is for you to think that you're with someone forever yeah. and it did so i remember like even my cousin tried to say to me what happens if jay leaves uh, then then guess what I, i'll do it all on my own yeah. well don't say stuff because the universe seems to listen yeah absolutely because, yeah so um my, my my man was absolutely perfect like he did he, he made sure he looked after me if i needed looking after we never argued we literally got on like house on fire people we made people feel physically sick because of how cute and lovey dovey we were that type of couple that would yeah. dance in the kitchen because a song came on <laughs> you know or he'd walk in with a rose in his mouth that he just picked from the front garden you know just, just a rose <laughs> no we had kids in the house um, but like when we got on brilliantly like we always talked and as far as i was concerned we had a very open transparent relationship if we yeah. either of us said or done something which never really happened but if either of us said or done something the other one didn't like you know we knew each other well enough that we absolutely, could absolutely yeah um and i remember having conversations with because people around me were having issues in their relationships and obviously they come to me for advice yeah um and talking about how narcissistic these people were and, and their relationship and you know i remember having um, a conversation with them saying see if you ever leave if you ever decided that you don't love me anymore yeah. just come just have a grown-up conversation like i will never ever beg anyone to be with me like you've got your life path i have mine yeah absolutely if, if it's not meant to be together then let's you know have a grown-up conversation so anyway hey, the man's on TikTok. yeah um he's got uh, by this point, nearly three quarters of a million followers, the 750,000 followers. Wowza. But he starts getting really obsessed with the app. And okay. um, when I say really obsessed with the app, like literally 24 hours a day or almost, the phone would be in his hand and not even looking on the For You page. He'd be on his analytics, literally oh, trying, yeah, to, yeah, yeah. trying to crack the code. There is <laughs> trying no, to crack there's the no, algorithm. There's no code. crack for TikTok. There's no crack for TikTok. Well, he believes that he believes he does. He has cracked it because every one of his posts will get like you know ten thousand yeah. views overnight and all that type of stuff. Um, but uh, but anyway, so he started saying that you know things like he thought TikTok were 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 messing with his account and things like that. Yeah. Um, and, and I kind of almost part of me kind of like took a step back from TikTok. Mm. Um, I just had Cody, you know, it wasn't really yeah. finding the time to make my posts and everything else. Um, and then the bloke talked me into removing. So he never posted me on his page yeah. because his female followers might get jealous and then you won't get as many likes. Yeah, I get that, yeah. Um, so, But it, I still posted about us on my page and everyone loved it because they'd still got to see what was going on. 
Wow. It's the one them up with the stupid jokes. You know, if you're in the middle of trying to make content and there'd be me running in and <laughs> telling them a stupid joke. <laughs> oh, um, but I remember he talked to me at one point into, you no, know, the first red flag that I should have seen was when he removed all the videos of me and him off his page Ooh, because we didn't yeah. have enough views. Yeah. Then the second red flag was when I tried to tag him in a video of his newborn baby on Instagram and he blocked me on it. He'd also blocked me on TikTok. Wow. I'm like, oh, why have you blocked me? And the, his excuse was because when he searches on, because he always searches himself as well to see what comes <laughs> up. Right? Uh, when he searched himself on, on Google, it came up with Sarah Rosmond and self build, not just oh. him. <laughs> so that really annoyed him because he's yeah. worked really hard on this account. Why? 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 And, why? And is UK, my name you there? came up first, yeah. Yeah. So, um, so that was his reason, as far as he was concerned. TikTok was work, and he wouldn't come yeah. to my work, even though I write books from home. Wow. Okay. So he talked me into that was his reasoning. Um. Anyway, then a couple of months later, he had talked me into my account. My account seemed like it was dead. He convinced me that it was because all these jealous women that was in love with him were reporting my account, right? He, he, he literally went on about it that much. So I think he actually did convince me at one point that I was getting people be, reporting my account for no reason. Wow. So I stopped posting for a while. Then he talked me into second red flag, which I didn't see, because I'm madly in love with the bloke, right? Absolutely, yeah. Love is blind. Put, put, I'll put all, well, that's something else. I'll tell you that in a second. So I'll put all those, put all those videos of me and him, all our videos, into private so no one can see it. Oh, wow. Okay. Put a white mask on and pretend to be someone else. So I did, and I became the masked author. I, um, I changed my account, but I was able to still keep my followers because I yeah. just literally just changed you know, the name. Yeah, absolutely. Changed the name and started started posting. A lot of people didn't even click on that, that Sarah Rosman was the masked author. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. So I'd, I'd done that, I'd done that, and it was doing quite well. My partner, you know, the, this man that, that, you know, loves me and respects me and everything else, was talking me into, so first of all, I had everything covered. You couldn't see my tattoos, like literally oh, yeah, could yeah, not yeah. tell who I was. Yeah. Slowly but surely, that outfits got smaller and smaller and smaller yeah. because <laughs> apparently that's what men want to see, you know? No and he problem. would literally, I would have a top on, and he would come in and he would undo the top a little bit. and was like, what are you doing? Come on, you know, and things like that. If you yeah. want the views, you need to get show a bit of skin, right? Yeah. Which, yeah, you could see that as that's a not a, an insecure man, you know. He knows that he's missing, you know. Yeah. And and I'm wearing a mask, and so nobody knows. Um. So anyway, our, our relationship's pretty cool. Uh, everything seems to be going really well. We put our life on hold because we'd had a baby, and yeah. then I told him. I remember having a conversation with him. I started doing battling on TikTok. I'd never really done battles before, but yeah. I started going live with the mask on, doing these battles. Um. And I had an agency ring me, uh, contact me, and they rang yeah. me up and basically wanted me to join. They thought I was amazing and everything. And I remember Jay getting really excited for me, yeah. um, saying it's amazing. Um, so I started going live more often. Now he done everything he could for me. He set up the back room and turned it into like a TikTok studio, put shelves yeah. up for me, all that type of stuff to try and help me. Um, our baby boy did not go to bed for daddy. Like literally uh, kicked them off. But me, say, yeah. me, put him in my arms and he went to bed straight away. Yeah. So we had a couple of weeks where it was like having to kind of teach, teach Cody that no daddy's taking you to bed. You just have yeah. to cope with him. Your mommy's busy. Um, but Cody would kick off most of the time. Like I'd be on live at the very start and I could hear him crying and stuff like that and I'm feeling guilty. Um, but I was making money and all the money that I was making was going towards us finally buying that van and doing that van up. And just because we had had a baby, I wasn't going to let that stop me from doing the traveling that I said I was going to do. Just decided that we'd do it with the baby. Yeah. Um, so that was, that, that was all good. That was how, how it was all going. Started saving up some money. I had my first ever big battle arranged by the agency. Um, and I remember Jay bigging, it, bigging me up all day. When, trying to get when, was, when was this? 25th of March. Oh, well, well, this year? Yeah, 25th oh, wow. of March. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 25th of March, I had a big battle organised um, and I remember Jay had been out and he'd been making TikToks um, and he'd come back and I remember him being a little bit like worried because he was half an hour late and I was like, honestly, I, my, my battle isn't until 10 o'clock. That's the type yeah. of couple we were, you know, I will support you and you know, I'll work around yeah, you. Absolutely, and, yeah. and I was like, no, you're, you're fine, honestly, I just need to be on at least an hour before my battle. So I remember at quarter to eight, well, half past seven, quarter to eight, he's literally nagging me to hurry up, go on, go and get on. You need to build up your room and all yeah. that sort of stuff. And I remember saying to him, Cody's not very tired, though. 
no he's all right he can just chill with daddy like he normally does you you just worry about your life told me how proud he was of, of me gave me a big kiss and everything um and said like we'll, we'll be fine honestly so this was a quarter to eight in the evening nine o'clock i remember needing the toilet so i said to my father be back in a second and everything yeah yeah when I went upstairs, I could hear Cody kicking off. So I guessed it was just him being a pain for his dad. Because yeah. daddy's putting him to bed, not mommy. Um, so anyway, I left him to it. Plus, I'm live. So I've got my followers there waiting yeah, absolutely, for me. Yeah, absolutely, um, yeah. I come downstairs and I've seen half a bottle on the side. And part of me wanted to go and take the half a bottle up and say this is probably what he wants. Yeah. Um, but then I didn't want to be that mom that gets involved and doesn't let dad just sort it yeah, out. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? I know how that can make someone feel. So I just kind of just, just left him to it, carried on with my life. Um, still heard cr Cody crying a little bit, but I just turned my music up because daddy's sorting him out. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, had my life, my first ever battle, done absolutely amazing. Um, th this bloke that apparently had never lost, um, he shouldn't have said that in front of my team because they smoked <laughs> him. Um, I came off my life buzzing, like, so yeah. I think I'd made £100 that night towards our van. So I was so yeah. excited, like, I came off really, really buzzing. And first thing I'd done is come into the kitchen, I'd made a coffee for me, me and my partner. And I went into the living room and he wasn't there. I was like, okay, then. so I sat there for about 15 minutes waiting. And I didn't hear nothing on the baby monitor. Um, Cody's got a little sofa in his room. So I thought maybe daddy's fallen asleep yeah. on the sofa. So I went upstairs, uh, the, by this point, about half past 10, and he wasn't there. Cody's, Cody's asleep. So I went into my one of my kids' rooms, like Levi's room, and said, have you seen Jay? And he was like, I don't know. I think he went to the shop. And I walked downstairs. And as I walked out, I noticed everything. I noticed everything. So I walked downstairs, and his coat's not there. Then I walked into the living room, and where his guitar's on the wall, there's my son's guitar instead. Oh. And then the computer that he accidentally factory reset, which you can't accidentally factory reset, but I didn't say anything because, you know, the computer that he accidentally factory reset, there was his SIM card sat on top of it. Oh. So, of course, I'm trying to ring his old number because yeah. his new numbers, he's left the SIM card behind. So, yeah, of course, yeah, I'm trying yeah. to ring. And I think I just knew when 12 o'clock came, there was no signal. I have done that trip from Northern Ireland over to England plenty of times. I know what yeah. time the sailing is. Um. I went up live at quarter to eight. He would have had to be at the train station, which is only around the corner from me, but he would have had to be on that train for 14 minutes past eight. Wow. So what that man done was he literally, when I went live, put our baby up in his cot, got his stuff and walked out the room, walked out the door. Uh, and, and left the baby unattended effectively because you were you thought that he had the baby. Wow. Uh, so wow. He, wouldn't, he wouldn't answer. Uh, phone kept ringing, no, no answer, nothing. Eventually, I sent a message at half past five in the morning. By then, I knew he was on a boat to England because he just got signal again. Yeah. And that's when, yeah, that's when you're coming into Liverpool, you get that signal again. Yeah. So I sent a message saying, look, I have no idea what's happened. Like, literally, we're, we're the happiest couple in the world. Like, you know, I have no idea what's happened. Yeah. Um, if you don't ring me, I've got no choice but to ring the police and report you as a missing person. At that point, sorry, baby. This is what I got. Sorry, baby. Um, I will give you a ring in a minute with like 20 kisses. <laughs> and that was it. Then he rang, then he did ring me uh, very, very briefly to tell me that he tried to kill himself. He tried to throw himself over a boat. Dear me. Um, and then we had like a little conversation about how he was coming home. He was getting the hang, hang on just one sec, sir. Just one sec. Sam, if you've given any, I know you've just come in the room. If you've given any gifts, give them to Sarah That's because uh, because you, she needs to win. I don't want to take her nuggies away from her because we're having this really intense conversation and uh, it's about her charity. Uh, so thank you for the gifts. I appreciate it. Any you've given me will be sent to Sarah later. Don't worry. Okay, go on, Sarah. Sorry. Yes, yeah, so we. So yeah, he, he, he short, so I know we've only got five minutes, but basically That's he was okay. crying telling me that he wanted to come home and he was getting the next boat home. Uh, then I had a message off him to say that his friend had already tra travelled up to go to pick him up. So I said to him, I remember um, sending a text message and, and basically saying, like, look, you obviously felt the need to get away. Yeah, I, I thought we spoke to each other, but you know, we obviously don't. Uh, you obviously felt the need to get away. Um, maybe spending a little bit of time, a couple of days with your friend might be what you need. Um, just give me a message whenever you get there and you're settled. That yeah. night, he didn't message me. Um, that night, I remember ringing him at, uh, trying to ring him at half past nine so he could say good night to his son because, you know, Cody had said good night to daddy every single yeah, night since the day he was yeah. born, um, but he didn't answer. And then the next day, I'm blocked off his TikTok, don't forget. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I was able to see by logging onto my computer and his uh, 
TikTok with his almost million followers says, uh, manifest single manifesting love. Oh. The man that was just coming home to me, I then sent him a message saying, why, why it doesn't say that you're single on TikTok? Yeah. Um, I just got ignored, completely ignored. Um, I know on the Wednesday he had an appointment with the job center, a phone call. And if he hadn't have answered that phone call, our money was going to get stopped. Yeah. So I remember sending him a message saying to him that if you don't uh, contact me by tomorrow, I've got no choice but to take you off our universal credit claim. We can't, you know, we can't have our money sanctioned because you're yeah, not yeah. answering. <clears throat> so anyway, within 10 minutes, he took himself off the universal credit claim oh. and then sent me the worst text message that he could have ever sent me. Capital letters. I don't want to argue with you, but I want a DNA test for Cody. Oh. We spent ev all day, every day together. From the second wow. we'd started talking to, to the second he'd walked out, but somehow. Wow. And Cody, Cody has dark skin like his dad. Look how yeah. white I am. Cody has dark yeah. skin like his dad, you know. Yeah. Um, he has dimples. I don't have dimples. Cody has dimples wow. like his dad. There was no denying that Cody is his. But when I spoke to his sister later that day, I found out that this is something Jay always does. Oh, he gets really? with a woman, he runs away. When he gets bored, he ups and leaves. And that I was very lucky because other women in his past have either had violence from him or been left in lots of debt. Wow. So, wow, so, wow, so wow. me getting left with a baby was better than what my options could have been. It's a, it's a gift. Uh, Cody's well, obviously a gift. Uh, so you if, know. if he wasn't, if he wasn't such a well-behaved baby, it might have made the whole thing harder. Yeah. Um, but one thing I realized within a week, so within a couple of days, I realized that man could never have loved me. You cannot do, you can't, you can't, you can't love someone that deeply and then just walk away and get on a boat and ignore them and pretend that they've never existed. No, you can't do that yeah, to someone you love. It doesn't make any sense, does it? It's very, it's very narcissistic. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I realised that I, I, I fell in love with a version of him that he pretended to be. I know, I, 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 yeah, I, 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 you can't keep that pretense up for that long. How long were you yeah. together? How long was it? Twenty-one months. Twenty-one. 21. Oh, well, nearly two, nearly two years as well. Mm -hmm. Wow. Uh, so, look, let's just talk at life as a single parent. How are you finding that at the moment? Absolutely loving it. Like I said, Cody is amazing. Such a chilled out baby. At the minute, he's got this new word. I don't even think he realizes what he's saying, but it's dad, 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 dad constantly. Oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. But, but that was the thing that I realized, like again, quite quite early on. I've done everything for Cody anyway. I understand. Yeah. I understood our son inside out, and it's because of having him at such a late age in life. Yeah, absolutely. Do you, do you find yourself before. a little bit more mellow? A little bit more so, laid so back. So much more mellow. So much yeah. more laid back. I've got the patience of a saint with him. I spend <laughs> a lot of time just watching him. Like literally yeah. a lot of time watching his little facial expression. Um, I do believe the reason why my son doesn't get stressed is because I always know what he wants. I can tell. And his dad got a little bit jealous of that, I'll be honest. You know, how could I tell what cry meant what? And it's like yeah, just absolutely, yeah. And mothers tend to know that anyway, don't they, to be fair. Yeah. You know, so and then what what other books have you got in the part? I know we've got a little bit more time, so, not much time um, left. So this will be the last battle. And then you so hopefully book Sarah, five. hang on, Sarah Louise, if you're gonna gift gift uh, Sarah, please, because I need well, Sarah to win. Okay, sorry, go on, yeah. So yeah, book book five. So Jay had already agreed that I was gonna write my tiktok love story because that was oh, our hashtag wow. that we used okay yeah yeah, yeah. So that was already agreed so we were already but i honestly thought that i was right book five as my happy ending absolutely yeah wow. well he gave me he gave me an awesome plot twist didn't he if nothing else it's well as, as long as no one watches this video then you'll be okay <laughs> well I was, I was no they all know anyway because um I obviously I became the mass author. So when he left, I realized that that was his way of getting me off the app. That was oh, his way right, of yeah. distancing himself from me. Yeah. Okay. Um, and, I, and I've been silenced my whole life. So to put that mask on me and pretend that I was someone else, I couldn't mm. talk about my real life. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And that's not, so as that's soon not as he you left, are, really. As soon as he left, that mask came off. I created Mommy and Cody account. And one of the first posts that I'd done was. Uh, how, how can this man go from being madly in love with me? And it was it was a video of us two dancing. Go from being madly in love with me to completely ghosting me and, wow. uh, you know, blocking me yeah, and his absolutely, son. Absolutely, yeah. And acting single 24 hours late, later. So that got wow. half a million views overnight. Brilliant. I mean, what do, what do you think your future holds, Sarah? 
Um, I will still be travelling with Cody, although I've been told tonight, wasn't impressed, that I might have an issue with that. Uh, Jay is on Cody's birth certificate, but obviously he's a stranger. He's, oh, he's got me blocked. There's no contact. Okay, yeah. Um, but he is he has got parental response he is or has joint parental responsibility mm -hmm. over his how, how old's Cody? How old's Cody? Fourteen months. Uh, I've, okay, I'm not going to. I'll message you separately because uh, there might just. I'm not sure. I'm, you might be okay, but anyway, look, I'm not a lawyer, but I've, I I know something about really that good. anyway. Uh, all right, so look, look, all Sarah, look, I have absolutely enjoyed and loved hearing about your past i'm glad to see that you're healing i'm not going to say you're healed um because no, i think you've obviously still got more you've got you, you've got still more healing to do i think anyway uh, but look thank you for being the first thank one you. of my interviews and i'm going to start doing this probably once a month it's a little bit of a of a um I don't know, a, a juggle to try and get them all done if I fit them into my normal working day. But but I've loved doing it. I don't think I could do it every I'd love to do it every night, but I could. I, I think mentally I couldn't do it every night. Uh, but if I do it once a month, then I think that'll be enough. Uh, but thank you for being the first one. Tomorrow night we've got... Uh, it'll be an honest. emotional one. It'll be an emotional one tomorrow night. Just as hard as tomorrow night. So that's a story of Isla, uh, who has literally got... Um, a terminal uh, illness, yeah. so I will probably need this uh, this loo roll tomorrow to wipe my eyes out. But that's I nine o'clock tomorrow that. night. Thank you for supporting as well. Look, I appreciate your time. Uh, I hope Cody's okay. And if you ever need to chat, obviously you can always come live with me and have a chat. We'll have a little battle. Yeah, uh, but anything, awesome. I, anything I've got, anything I get tonight, I'll make a note of how much it was and I'll send it you over uh, mm -hmm. as soon as I, as soon as I've got it. And we'll go from there. Okay. Um, that that will be get sent get sent to Nexus NI, which is a charity that help give free free counselling to people that have been through this type of stuff. Brilliant. I think you're amazing, by the way, Sarah. So as I say, don't well, forget one person. And there is a movie. I guarantee that I, all those books can be a screenplay of some of some. some yeah, stuff. I started trying to write the screenplay. I think I'll stick to the books. That's hard work. <laughs> Bless you. That's hard work. Let, let somebody <laughs> just just get it out there, and somebody else will take over the reins, and they'll do the yeah. screenplay. So, but I think there's definitely a story there, you know. So, but look, Sarah, thanks for your time. Uh, I appreciate you. it. And if you've got any questions, just drop me a line. Okay. Lots of love. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great evening. Thank you, guys. Lots Bye of love. Now. Bye bye. That was Sarah. God, wasn't that emotional, guys? God, that was lovely. <laughs> it was amazing. Um, guys, I am just going to need to go.